Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I appreciate so much you allowing me to come into your home. This is Pastor T with Christian Center Church, and this is the message after the message. Christian Center Church, we're located in Mariana, Florida on Sheffield Drive. So if you ever are in the Mariana area, we would love for you to come and be a part of our service on Sundays at 1030 a.m. This is a relaxed environment. And uh, this is what um, I feel like God wants me to share with you tonight. And so uh, let's just pray and let's ask God to be a part of this tonight. Father, thank you for who you are. Thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for your, your power. And we thank you for your son and the sacrifice on the cross. Father, I just pray that tonight you would allow your message to ring clear. And I pray that hearts and minds would be opened up to hear your words tonight. Father, we just ask that through the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Listen, before I get started, um, if you have any prayer requests or if you want to know more about a relationship with Jesus Christ, um, email me. I'm at Pastor T at cccmariana.org and those emails come straight to me and if you have a prayer request I would love to pray for you um, and if you have any questions about anything just give me a call and or give me an email not a call but an email and uh, we'll uh, we'll respond back to you you could call me if you wanted to 850-526-4475 we'll put that on the screen for you um, again, that's 850-526-4475. Love to talk to you if you want to chat. But uh, anyway, what I want to share with you tonight is sometimes we tend to put Jesus in a box. Now, we love boxes. Um, and we fear things kind of out of control. Fear, fear for us can happen quick. And, and fear creates doubt in our minds. If you've ever been in a fearful situation, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, it comes fast, and then it creates doubt in our minds. And so um, one of the fears that I want to share with you tonight is this, the fear of getting God out of my box. Now, we like boxes. I mean... Think about it. The primary function of a box is to hold our stuff. I mean, that's what boxes do. They hold our stuff. And, and we like the fact that we can be organized and put all of our stuff in a box. And then we take the box and we pack it away. And then we realize or we sometimes label those boxes and we'll say Christmas stuff. Or we'll say, you know, toys or whatever, clothes. Um, and we put those out in the garage or we put them in a closet and we realize that all of those things, our stuff is in a box and it's packed neatly and hey, we're good because it's organized. Now, there's big boxes, there's medium sized boxes, there's small boxes, there's cereal boxes, shut up, boo. There's boom boxes. Remember the 80s? The boom box I had one of those. It was awesome. Um, there's pet boxes. There's gun boxes. And there's shoe boxes. And there's hat boxes. And the truth is, we like boxes. Boxes create order. They create control in our lives. Now, I'm going to go to some scripture here in just a minute out of Matthew. And even in the day of Jesus, they were trying to put Jesus in a box. Now, you have to understand, although Jesus lived 2,000 years ago, we still do the same thing today. We still try to put Jesus in a box. But let's go back to the time of Jesus through this scripture and we're going to take a look at what I mean by putting Jesus in the, in the box. Even his closest disciples tried to put him in a box. Now, now let me share, share this with you. Here's Jesus in a box. Back, back in the day, they called him a revolutionary. Then he paid his taxes. 
Okay, They called him a country bumpkin carpenter, but his wisdom confounded scholars in the temple. They wanted to see his miracles, but he wouldn't show them when they asked. He was a Jew, but he attracted Gentiles. And that's not a good thing back in the day now. Gentiles and Jews were completely separated and isolated from each other. So he was a Jew, but he was attracting Gentiles with his message. And so he was also a holy man, but he hung out with sinners. He was righteous. He was God in the flesh, and he's down here hanging out with sinners. See, they're trying to put him in a box, and they just couldn't do it. In a male-dominated society back in the day, he recruited females. He recruited women for his mission to help him in his mission. He talked like a king, but he walked like a pilgrim with nowhere to call home. Now, what I want to share with you tonight is very top secret, okay? And I, I want you to understand something about King Jesus. Jesus will not fit inside of your box, of any box. And that scares us. We like our boxes. We like things that are neat and in order and organized and that makes us comfortable and it makes us feel safe and so we tend to put Jesus in a box because it's a safe Jesus you see we realize Jesus as our Savior and we say that all the time Jesus is our Savior he came and he saved the lost but Jesus is also Lord did you know that the word Lord is mentioned seven, over 7,800 times in the Bible, which means that Jesus is referred to as Lord more than He is referred to as Savior. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus isn't our Savior. If it wasn't for His sacrifice on the cross, none of us would be saved. We would not have eternal life and a life-giving relationship with God right now because of the sacrifice of Jesus. So yes, Jesus is definitely our Savior, but Jesus is also our Lord. And the, the term Lord means ownership. You see, when Jesus Christ comes into your life and into your heart, when you say yes to Him and you surrender everything over to Him and you say, you know what, I've tried to do life on my own, but I just can't do it. Or I've gotten myself into a mess or I've backed myself into a corner. Whatever it might be, you might be listening right now and watching this program and you might be going through something incredibly traumatic in your life. You might be going through a financial difficulty in your life. You might be facing a horrible disease right now and you, and, and you look up and you say, Jesus, come into my life. I believe what you did on the cross saved me and then you allow God to come into your life and Jesus to be a part of your life and you accept that and the Holy Spirit enters into your life and it gives you energy and supernatural power um, to live like Jesus lived. Now am I saying we're perfect? Absolutely not. Every single one of us mess up. The Bible says we're all sinners but that's why Jesus came and with God's undeserved kindness gave the sacrifice of His Son Jesus so that you and I could have a relationship with a holy God and we were, were able to enjoy the benefits of being in that relationship with God. But we put Jesus in a box because Jesus is safe. We like Jesus in a box. But Jesus doesn't fit inside of our box. Let me give you some scripture to back this up, okay? This is Jesus, and he's about to take three of his disciples, or two of his disciples, um, actually three, um, up the mountain. Because he's about to meet with the Father. So this is what Matthew 17, verses 1 through 8 say. Six days later... Jesus took Peter and the two brothers, James and John, the sons of thunder, and led them up a high mountain to be alone. 
As the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transformed so that his face shone like the sun, get this, and his clothes became as white as light. Suddenly, Moses and Elijah appeared and began talking with Jesus. Now, can you imagine this being Peter, you being Peter, James, or John, and you walk up this mountain with Jesus, and you're following this guy, and all of a sudden, two people from the past show up. Jesus starts shining like a bright light. I would be freaking out. Now, this is what the uh, scripture goes on to say. It says, Peter exclaimed immediately when he saw this. He exclaimed, Lord, it's wonderful for us to be here. I mean, he was excited because he was the brave one. Peter was very full of courage. And he's like, man, this is awesome, God. This is awesome. And he said, if you want, if you want me to, I'll make three shelters as memorials. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. How about that, Jesus? But even as he spoke, the scripture continues to say, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. Listen to him. Now, here's Peter, James, and John. They followed Jesus up the mountain. They're standing there. Jesus transforms into this bright light. Moses and Elijah appear, and Peter gets really excited. I love what Scripture says here. Even as Peter was talking, he got interrupted by God the Father. So he's sitting here going, okay, here's what we need to do. We need to build an altar for you. We need to build an altar for Elijah. And Moses and God, God says, wait a minute, I'm not even listening to this. And a cloud overshadowed them. And the voice said, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. Listen to him. Now, listen to this. It says the disciples were terrified at this point. And they fell face down on the ground. As if not seeing Jesus turn into this big bright light and two men of God from the past appear as if that wasn't terrifying enough. They were excited and then all of a sudden God spoke and then they were terrified. Okay? So they fell face down on the ground. Then Jesus came over and touched them and said, Get up. Don't be afraid. And when they looked up, Moses and Elijah were gone and they only saw Jesus. Now, real quick, I want to give you a couple of things out of this passage that I feel like the Lord had given me. And I want to share them with you. The first thing that I want to share with you is this, and is that Jesus led them up the mountain. Okay? He led him. This is where the lordship of Jesus comes into place. They followed him. They had no idea what they were going to be doing up on top of that mountain. Jesus didn't have this plan in place. He says, all right, when you get to the top of the mountain with me, I don't want you to be afraid. This is what's going to happen. No, he led them and they followed that's discipleship. That's saying, Jesus, you are my Lord. You command me, you lead me, and wherever you lead me, I will go. And so it says in verse 1, six days later, Jesus took Peter and the two brothers, James and John, and he led them up a high mountain to be alone. Now, a cost in following Jesus is that we're always going to be taught lessons in trust. Okay? Every time you and I launch out in faith into whatever Jesus leads us into, it's a trust-building exercise. You see, faith is like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the stronger it gets. And so you and I, as we are led by Jesus, remember He's our Lord, and He tells us to do something or He commands us to go somewhere, we follow Him 
not necessarily knowing what the outcome is going to be. That is called faith. And the more that you and I do that, the more our faith grows and strengthens in Jesus. Plenty of times God has asked me to do this or to, to do that, to plant a church here or to follow Him over to this ministry. And it didn't make sense at the time. But I can promise you, looking back over the course of those years where Jesus led me, I knew He had a plan for my life. He's got a plan for your life. But so many times we put Jesus in a box and we say, Jesus, you're safe and I'm good with you being in the box. Now, today I want to tell you this. Another cost of following Jesus is that He will reveal Himself to show you who He really is in the supernatural realm. Now, what I mean by that cost is yes, because that can scare us. Now, it depends on where you come from and what your denomination is. But the more you follow Jesus as your Lord, He's going to stretch you and stretch you and stretch you. He comes out of the box, and when He comes out of the box, it scares us because we don't know what He's going to do next. We don't know where He's going to lead us next. So, what we do is we put Jesus in this nice, little box and we take him out on Sunday morning or we take him out when we need him and we take him out when we're desperate but I'm going to promise you something that's not how Jesus works Jesus is untamable Jesus Christ is God in the flesh he is the son of God sitting at this moment at the right hand of God the Father and Jesus will not fit into your box. He won't fit into my box either. I've tried. I want Jesus to fit into my box. Now, listen to this. The disciples see His glory in the supernatural. Okay, look at verse 2. As the men watched Jesus. Now, this isn't just a secondhand story. As the men, these disciples, watched Jesus... His appearance was transformed so that his face shone like the sun and his clothes became white as light. Now, let me give you two things here. A special revelation of the divine nature or the divinity of Jesus to those closest to Jesus freaked him out. Okay? When he became white in appearance... And God the Father spoke that divine revelation of the divinity of Jesus literally terrified them. Now, I understand that. Could you imagine driving down the road or could you imagine sitting at your home watching TV and you literally in an audible voice the way Jesus and the three disciples heard on the Mount of Transfiguration speak directly to you? I would have done the same thing those disciples would, did. I would have hit the ground. Now, God's divine affirmation of everything Jesus had done already and was about to do. You see, that's what Jesus was being. When, when God said, He is my Son, I am well pleased with Him. He brings me great joy. Listen to Him. They were watching His divine glory. They heard God as they watched Jesus. And that is who Jesus is. Now, this tells me a few things. Follow me on this, if you will. The closer you choose to walk with Jesus, the more out of the box He will become for you. Okay? The closer that you choose to follow Jesus, the more out of the box He will become. The closer you choose to walk with Jesus, the more His divine nature, His divinity will become apparent to you. Now, you have the choice. Don't get me wrong. You can keep God in the box or you can keep Jesus in the box and pull Him out when you need to. 
That's called free will. You have that choice. But when you pull him out of the box, realize that he is going to do supernatural things in your life that you can't do on your own in the natural. And so the closer you choose to walk with Jesus, the, the, the more you decide to pull him out of that box, the more of his divine nature is going to become apparent to you. God the Father knew what his son was about to face, and just like a loving father does, he confirmed his son. Now Jesus out of the box right here, verse 7 says, Get up, don't be afraid. Now, the second thing I want you to realize is this. Fire on the mountain became foot in the mouth for Peter. All right? Let's look at verse 4 again. Peter blurted out, Lord, it's wonderful for us to be here. If you want, I'll make three shelters as memorials or tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. I will make... Peter wanted to bring people back up to the mountain to give them tours and say, hey, look, this is what happened up here. I've got proof of it. And there would be some vendors over here in the corner over here selling trinkets. And there would be the, the ticket line over here. Come to the Mount of Transfiguration where Jesus turned into a bright light and Moses and Elijah appeared and God spoke. Jesus wanted to take, I mean, Peter wanted to take Take people back up the mountain and say, look, I have proof. But in verse 5, he says, even as he spoke. Here's Peter now, chatterbox and flapping that gator, talking about, hey, listen, we're going to make some tabernacles up here, Jesus, and, and then we're going to bring people up here, and, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. And even as he spoke, the father interrupted him and says, this is my dearly loved son. Let me say this. When Jesus is out of the box, plan on your plans being interrupted. Now, that's another reason we don't like to take Jesus out of the box. We don't like our plans interrupted. We have everything set and it's nice and neat and orderly and our plans are our plans and don't mess with my plans. But if you pull Jesus out of the box, I can promise you this, the closer you walk with him and the more you pull him out of the box and the more your faith grows in who he is, your, your plans will be interrupted by his plans. And I can promise you that's not a bad thing. That's actually a good thing. Because Jesus knows better than you and I do about our very own lives. Why? Because God created us. It's, he's the manufacturer of me. He's the manufacturer of you. So He knows what makes us tick. He knows what gives us joy. He knows what our desires of our hearts are. He knows what we like to do. He knows that we like music and art and all of these awesome things that are a part of our life. And He wants to give us the desires of our heart. But we hold on to, to, to our own plans because we don't want... Get, our plans to be interrupted because if we feel like our plans get interrupted, we're going to miss out on something. But the truth is, the tighter you hold to your plans, you are going to miss out on something. Something supernatural, something that God wants to do in your life. Now, Jesus had to shatter these three disciples' preconceived ideas of who he was. He saw their box. He saw that they were putting him into a box and he saw their future and he realized that a boxed size Jesus was not going to cut it. In other words, Jesus had a destiny for Peter. Jesus had a destiny for James and John. And Jesus has a destiny for you. And you have to understand that when you keep Jesus in the box, that size Jesus is not going to cut it. He's going to be everything, everything, and more than you thought He would be. Now, the full life in Christ is this. A complete exchange from our way of doing things to His way of doing things. Jesus out of the box is messy. Take a box of cereal, pour it on the ground. Why would you do that? That creates a mess, right? 
We want to keep it inside of the box. Jesus in the box is organized. It's comfortable. Jesus out of the box is scary. Jesus inside of the box is tame. Jesus out of the box will challenge me, will challenge you to go further in our lives. But Jesus inside the box will just kind of keep me at status quo and I can pull him out when I need to. Jesus out of the box cannot be understood or fully rationalized. Jesus in the box is presumed. Ah, Jesus is in the box. I'll pull him out when I need to. It's a presumed relationship. Jesus out of the box has a better plan for your life is where maximum trust is found. And thirdly, is where maximum freedom is found. You know, there's a Bible verse in 2 Corinthians that says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Now, a lot of us decide to keep Jesus in the box. And when we decide to keep Jesus in the box, we never let Him out to do business in our lives and in our hearts. And when we don't let Him out to do the business in our lives and our hearts, we are never set free from the bondage of our own selves and our own lives. I mean, Jesus wants you to be free from the addiction that you're in right now. Jesus wants your marriage healthy. Jesus wants your relationships at work and at home healthy and full of love and peace and joy. But I'm going to promise you something. In order for that to happen, you have got to let him out of the box. Don't put him in the box any longer. He wants to be everything for you. And if you will give him that right, if you will give him total surrender in your life, I can promise you he will do so much in your life. He will begin replacing anger and replacing it with joy. He will begin replacing fear and putting courage where that fear used to be. He'll be he will replace hatred or unforgiveness in your life and he'll he'll replace that with love and joy and forgiveness in your life. I mean after all, Jesus out of the box is our prince of peace. I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. And like I said at the beginning of the so if you have any questions or any prayer concerns, please email me at Pastor T at cccmariana.org or you can give me a call, 850-526-4475. And until next week, this is Pastor T signing out.